All right, so for this part, you need your ruler. Mine is extra large, okay? Um, you need your worksheet for what we're doing in class today, okay? And you need your non-graphing calculators. I know my picture is inverted. I'm sorry, it's the only way for me to actually show it to you. All right, so what are we actually looking at here? Here we are looking at a bunch of different orbits, okay, that have the same two foci. Right? We have star A, which is most likely what? Guys, what's always one of the foci? The sun. The sun. The sun. Right? So one of the two foci. I don't care which one you're going to do it as. I would prefer for today, I would just go with star A as the sun. So this is going to be your sun. Okay? Now that's important. All right? Come on. Okay. The distance between the two foci are not going to change no matter which planet we are looking at. Okay. The foci are staying exactly the same for each of the three planets. However, what is changing is the distance of the major axis, right? So for planet X, the length of the major axis is going to be, let's just give it a different color, let's go with green, okay, between one and three. That's going to be my the length of my major axis for, I love when things work. Okay, we're just going to use our fingers here. Okay, that's the length of the major axis for planet X. Okay, for planet Y, the length of the major axis is going to start at five, go through the two foci until it hits seven. Okay, and the length of the major axis for Z is gonna start at eight and go all the way through to 10. You guys with me so far? You guys okay? Yeah. Okay, so let's start with, I just highlighted it so that you guys can see it in the video a little bit better. So let's start with the distance between the foci. Now I want you to take your rulers. Now my ruler is in inches, so I have to be very careful with this. So you should be using your centimeter end of your ruler. It makes your life a lot easier because you need to be as specific as possible. But remember, if you use the inches side of your ruler, be consistent. Do not switch from inches to millimeters or else it will be a complete mess up. Okay. So for me, I want you guys to measure the distance between the two foci. Okay. So how do we do that? We line up our ruler. I'm going to make it easier and start at one. So you go from the middle of the dot for A and you, oh, and the other thing is guys, you probably are going to want to triple click and start your guided access so this doesn't move, right? If I move it here, it moves, but here it will not move, right? You guys all have guided access set up, so this should just be turning it on now. I'll give you guys a second to do that because I know some of you guys didn't already do that, and that's okay. There is nothing wrong with that. Okay, so I'm going to measure the distance between my foci here. I want you to do the same thing. Okay, I want you to do this with me. All right, now remember, as long as you are consistent, okay, then you will get the correct answer. It's all about consistency. So here I have between star A and star B. I got about one and an eighth. Okay, so I'm going to be consistent with this and round this to the nearest whole number. Or I should say it should be one point. Hold on, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Yeah, 
So I'm going to say this is 1.2. Okay. So down here, okay, down here, between the distance between my foci was 1.2. Go. Go. Okay. Whatever you get the distance between the foci, you write it down. Okay. Then you are going to take your ruler again and measure between one and three. And that is my length of the major axis for planet X. And I got about 1.5. Now your numbers are going to be different and that's okay because it's based on what you are using. 1.5. Nope, oh, that's the wrong place. Okay, did everybody get their D and their L set up? Yes, no, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so now you notice that your distance between the foci is a smaller number. I don't care if it's, in my case, it's only off by 0.3. Okay. It should be a smaller number because the foci distance is much smaller. They're inside of your orbit. So now you write out your formula. I want to see your calculations down here. Okay, so for planet X, right? Right? E equals lowercase d over L. Come on, guys. Let's make sure you guys can see this. Why won't you look? Okay, so E equals d over L. Okay, maybe you can see it that way, right? And all we do is substitute our numbers in. So I have 1.2 over 1.5. So my eccentricity, when you take out your non-graphing calculators, 2 divided by 1.5, my eccentricity for planet X, I got as 0 0.800, okay? If yours is off, it's okay. Um, usually with the regents in this kind of a case, it might give us uh, like if it goes from 0.7 to 0.9 kind of a thing. Okay. Did you guys get anywhere near that? I got like a 0 0.75. Is that? That's fine. Acceptable? It's between 0 0.7 and 0.9. Remember the... Um, the regents gives us a little bit of a leeway. It's kind of like plus or minus one. So if it falls anywhere between 0.7 and 0.9, you're fine. Anybody else? Did you guys get the same numbers? Are you similar? You guys, help me out because I can't see you. I got the same. Same? Good. It's pretty easy, but you just have to remember it. And this is one of the uh, important parts for the regents, right? So let's go back up to our drawing here, right? The next question says, where's the fastest point during the orbit, right? If this is our sun, would we be moving faster or slower if we were at point one? Faster. Why? Because it's closer to the point, focal point. Exactly. So, right, as you're looking at it here, your answer would just be one. Okay. So where in this orbit, in planet X's orbit, would I be at two, three, four, uh, would be the absolutely positively slowest part. Which one? Four. You're thinking four? Anybody agree, disagree? 
Three. Three? Anybody agree, disagree? Guys at school, what do you think? Three or four? Three. Three is farther from the planet than four is. Exactly. So if you put four, guys, you were on the right track. But point three is exactly the same distance or on the complete opposite side as point one. Point one here is going to be some, uh, winter, right? And we know during the winter, that's going to be when we are the absolute positively closest part to the sun and we're moving the fastest, right? If we are exactly on the opposite side, we are in what season? Summer. Exactly. We're at summer. During the summer months, we are moving very slowly. So even though four, if three wasn't there, four would be your answer. But you see how four is just slightly closer. If you were to actually measure the distance between the sun and four and the sun and three, it would be in decimal of a difference, but three would still be further away. Okay, so the slowest point during the orbit would be three. You guys understand that? Any questions? Help me out here, guys. Okay, if nobody has any questions, I want you to try to finish this um, by the end of the period. I know we got interrupted by the announcement, okay? But I want you to finish these two in the next five minutes or so. Don't worry about the other worksheet. We will do that again tomorrow. Okay? I don't want you guys to do that on your own. I want to do it uh, together, I believe, tomorrow. Actually, you know what? Try to do that one for homework tonight. We'll go over it tomorrow. And I'm going to give you your in-class quest. Okay, tomorrow also, so that we have another practice to do for this, because that's how important this topic is. Okay? Is it going to be graded? The quest? Yes. The in-class quest, not the homework. Okay, but we're going to do the quest together in class. I'm doing my for the brightness so I can see your work. That's her, what's up? I wanted to see the work again. Oh, sure. Um, let's see if you can see it. Hold on. Okay, so can I move further away? Nope, gotta go close to you. Uh, okay, there it is. Okay, so here's the formula. E equals D over L. Okay. Yeah. From my chart, right, I found the distance between the foci to be 1.2 and the distance or the length of the major axis is 1.5. That's what I found it to be. Now remember, you're the one doing this. So it's based on your perspective, right? And again, it's based on your ability to read a ruler as long as you're consistent and the regents will probably give us uh, a range of 0.7 right usually and mrs strico will tell you the same thing it'll usually say plus or minus 0.1 right which means that it will be anywhere between 0.7 to 0.9 as the answer so if your answer was to fall somewhere between 0.7 and 0.9, then we would give you the credit for it. All right, thank you. No problem. So the distance between the foci is the same? The distance between the foci should stay 1.2 for all of them because it does not change. Right, because the foci are still between star A or the sun and B. It's really the length of the major axis. So for the second one, we're now going from 5 to 7. <clears throat> now, believe it or not, guys, I did this last year and the year before and the year before that with this particular worksheet. And what ends up happening is the hardest part for students is one, recognizing that one of them is the sun, and two, figuring out what the length of the major axis actually is. 
Okay. So the fact that you have your iPads, it's a little bit easier because you can do like I did and highlight it, right? All I did was take my little highlighter function here. And I said from five to seven, right, is for planet Y. Right? Okay, I'm going to unpin myself. Does anybody, guys at school, because I haven't heard from you, do you guys have any questions? And by the way, is everybody repping their prep gear today? Come on. Even though I'm not there, I'm still participating. School spirit, yay! How are we doing? How are we doing? Is I think it's still recording. Is it? Oh, hello. I thought I hit stop recording, but okay. Awesome. 